Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward and welcome to City Line. As Veterans Day approaches, stepped up efforts to meet the needs of those who served are in the works. Governor Maura Healy is making veterans care a priority by elevating the Secretary of Veterans Services to a cabinet level position for the first time. And joining me now is Secretary Dr. John Santiago. He's an emergency room physician at Boston Medical Center, a major in the Army Reserves and a former state representative. So you've held the position uh, for less than a year. We'd like to get an update on where veteran services uh, stand uh, in the state, Dr. Santiago. You know, the pandemic exposed systemic failures in the soldier's home in uh, Chelsea and Holyoke, both locations saw some very deadly and tragic outbreaks of COVID-19. What types of changes are being made there, structurally and culturally? Well, let me just say, it's great to see you. You're absolutely right. We've been in office for less than a year. We just hit the eight, mo eight month mark and we're excited what's happening with the leadership of Governor Healy Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, not just in terms of resources, but with an infusion of energy. And this office became elevated for a variety of reasons, but one of which you point to the tragic occurrences at both Holyoke and Chelsea. So a lot of things are happening. Mm -hmm. There was a law that was passed, actually was a legislator at the time, that elevated this office and sought to propose a variety of different mechanisms to professionalize and standardize care at both homes. So over the past eight months, what we've done, a variety of things. We secured federal funding to build a brand new home at Holyoke. It's a $500 million project. Groundbreaking started two months ago. At Chelsea, a new home has been built. It just opened two weeks ago. It was DPH licensed and our first 20 veterans moved in. And what I can tell you is that tears were shed veterans, their families and staff. It's an amazing building. Looking forward to supporting our veterans there. Now, you've described your mission as kind of a startup and a turnaround, quote unquote. Um, what do you mean and, and how are you working to rebuild trust in the agency? So yeah, it's a startup and it's a turnaround. When it was a department, it was within the behemoth that is Health and Human Services, a huge $26 billion uh, department. Now that's been elevated, so I've had to put out a call to increase capacity, bring vision, and bring leadership. Mm -hmm. And over the course of the past eight months, particularly those first three months, we've added a significant amount of staffing to do all the amazing things that we need to do. It's a turnaround in that there were a number of things that needed to be addressed. As you mentioned, both homes, but a variety of issues that were happening inside the agency. You know, when 110 people die, that doesn't happen by accident. Mm -hmm. There are some systemic issues that had to be addressed, and we're on the march to doing just that. Um, former service members have long been at greater risk of, of homelessness. Uh, and in fact, um, I think our audience might be surprised to know that more than half of all homeless veterans are African American or Hispanic. How uh, is your department addressing that disparity and that need? Let me just say that I'm very proud that in our executive office, we honor diversity. I'm proud to be a Puerto Rican veteran serving as a secretary. The deputy secretary is an African -Amer American woman. A variety of senior staff are veterans or women are people of color and in fact some of the work we've done is to highlight veterans and their diversity. One of the first social media campaigns we had was called the Many Faces of Veterans mm -hmm. and in fact during Veterans Week we'll be hosting an exhibit in the, in the State House focusing on the many experiences of our veteran community. The city of New Bedford marked its third year of achieving what is called functional zero veteran homelessness. What does that mean exactly and how did the city achieve it? So what happened about 10 years ago during the Obama administration, there was a big push to end veteran homelessness, working through these entities across the state of Massachusetts, about 12 of them. And New Bedford, down there, they did an amazing job of getting folks to functional zero, that if there, if there was a veteran that was homeless, that they could find them a place to live. I was just down there a couple of weeks ago with the mayor and with a variety of nonprofits, learning about their strategies, what they were doing to do that. What we learned is that it's important to do more than just provide an apartment or a house. It's about providing those wraparound services. Mm -hmm. As a physician who works at Boston Medical Center, who understands the complexity of homelessness, mental health substance use, it really is clear to me that in order to address homelessness, you have to have a multi-pronged effort to do just that. And so at our office, 
we support a variety of nonprofits, upwards of almost $20 million to do just that, not just to support folks in finding a place to live, but to provide those wraparound services, whether it's food security, whether it's mental health uh, support, a variety of things needed to keep folks in the home. You know, we're talking about equity and diversity. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs Office of Health Equity suggests that the racial and ethnic composition of veterans is going to change. The projected proportion of veterans who are black will increase from 12 to 15 percent. Hispanic veterans will jump from 8 to 12 percent, while the number of white non-Hispanic veterans will fall from 74 percent to 61 percent. So disparity in care for racial and ethnic minorities uh, has been noted on a federal level. Talk more, if you would, about how Veterans Services is addressing the equity issue here in the state. We are making a purposeful effort to go out there and talk with folks who may not represent what the standard veteran looks like. Oftentimes people think of a veteran, maybe a Vietnam era, likely a male, likely a white male. We understand that the veteran experience encompasses a whole host of different folks, irrespective of your gender, political affiliation, sexual orientation, they're still veterans. They mm -hmm. serve their country, they signed the same dotted line, they took the same oath that I did. And it's important that we honor them because they honorably served us. Dr. Santiago, uh, uh, how is the agency addressing mental health challenges uh, that veterans face with uh, suicide rates disproportionately high among this group? What types of support services are available, Dr. Santiago? This is Dr. an Santiago? incredibly important issue. Veterans come back from certain deployments, trying to reintegrate back into society, find a job, support their family after they've been gone for a while. It can be challenging, mm -hmm. particularly with facing a variety of issues, maybe abroad, coming back with PTSD, anxiety, depression. It's important that we provide support for them, particularly in that transition phase. So working alongside federal partners, nonprofits here, to make sure that that transition phase goes as smoothly as possible is something that we're committed to doing. Additionally, in our office, we support a variety of programs focused on outreach and peer-to-peer -peer support. Having veterans, talking to veterans, how can we support you? How can we engage you? How can we fulfill your needs and that of your family? It's important to realize we don't want to just take care of the veteran, that their families are just as important and that we're focused on supporting them as well. So there's, there's so much here. What are some of the biggest challenges, some of the biggest challenges that you see for veterans services and, and how are you outlining them in terms of what you're going to tackle first? We still have a whole host of things that we have to get done. We've only been there for eight months addressing the veteran homes, both in Holyoke and Chelsea, getting them DPH license. We got Chelsea license, we're working on Holyoke, making sure that they are providing excellent care. That's something that we're committed to doing, standardizing protocol. We're still building out the office. As I said, we hired 50 people in the first three months, making sure that people are operating efficiently, functionally together to make sure that all the good things that need to happen to support our veterans uh, is happening. So those are the big kind of challenges that I see, but I'm excited about it. We're on uh, a great trajectory. Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll are both committed to this, and we're looking forward to better days ahead. You want to share some of the big events you have planned for the week ahead? Sure. sure. So instead of just Veterans Day, we want to come right at the week. Mm -hmm. And so we have a variety of events going on. On Monday, we'll be announcing the Governor's Veteran Advisory Council. We're also implementing a Women's Veteran Advisory Council, again, to reflect the diversity uh, that, um, that our veterans represent. Also, we'll be having a big event on Friday, November 10th. Hundreds of people with Governor Healy there and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll talking about Veterans Day. Also look forward to a variety of different announcements that we'll be sharing soon, uh, particularly with respect to legislative efforts to really improve the benefits that we support our veterans with, mm -hmm. but also uh, the legislative efforts focused on inclusivity and modernization of services. All right, great stuff. Dr. John Santiago, Secretary of Veterans Services, thank you for joining us. Thank you.